Hello, uh, this paper is titled Towards a Queer State, Joan Jet Black and Arthur Evans, and it comes from my PhD research project and is carried out following a practice-led research methodology. So alongside the written research, I wrote and directed a 30-minute film titled Expulsion, in which a fictional queer state, a uh, queer nation state, um, defines itself in opposition to capitalism and homonormativity. However, as the queer state devolves into a dystopian bureaucracy um, in the film, it starts protecting its borders and rejecting applicants from entering the state based on a very opaque system of value judgments. And archival footage of Joan Jet Black is interspersed throughout the film and retellings of Arthur Evans' research is uh, retold as well. So this research uh, paper asks a question that as Stonewall in 2015 and other big budget films fail to adhere to historical accuracy, can artists film represent queer history in a way that challenges mainstream cinema's ahistorical representations? And as homonormativity is neoliberal and thus tends towards the apolitical um, outside of issues that affect the individual, does the inclusion of queer history and activism in artist film or independent film allow for alternatives to homonormativity to be created? Munoz wrote that straight time is a self-naturalizing temporality wherein the world is calibrated for heteronormative concepts of biology that follow a logic geared towards reproduction. Um, and while, to quote Munoz again, Heteronormative culture makes queers think that both the past and the future do not belong to them. Uh, to queer time allows for alternatives to emerge both for queers and heterosexuals. And by queering time both uh, in reality and the cinema, challenges are made to straight time. And to quote Dietz and All again, visions of other past, presents and futures are made possible. So queer filmmakers have often attempted to trace or reflect on LGBTQ plus history throughout, uh, identity throughout history. In Caravaggio and Edward II uh, by Derek Jarman, he exhumes the queer identity of these historical figures and in doing so creates a queer lineage to quote Stam in 2018. And this queer lineage, Stam says, provides a queer family history and a tool for education, a means for queers to understand their origins as well as to make sense of their own place in the world. And The Watermelon Woman, um, directed in 1996 by Cheryl Dunier, revolves around a young lesbian filmmaker played by Dunier herself, who's pictured here, and she's searching for her own queer lineage through staged archival material of a fictional black lesbian actress from the 1920s. And this film draws attention to what's missing in the archive, how narratives um, or majority narratives um, decide whose stories get told and whose stories are kind of preserved in the archive. So this film draws attention to a lack of lineage while Derek Jarman is trying to exhume a kind of maybe straight washed history of historical figures. So they're both interested in um, queering time and positioning themselves in relation to queer history. So this paper aims to examine the emerging queer, sorry, emerging queer filmmaking practice of using specifically LGBTQ plus archival works amongst um, fictional works. So an example of this is 120 BPM directed by Robert Campolo in 2017. And he intercuts archival videos of actual Paris, as you can see on the top, uh, the top image, of Act of Paris's uh, protests, and they're intercut into um, a fictional plot-driven drama about Act of Paris, a sort of fictionalized account. And in the film, he also restages uh, some of the protests, as you can see in the bottom image. So in 120 BPM, the fictional space of the film is interrupted with the uncomfortable truth of the archival footage undercutting the audience's pleasure in the storytelling and cinematography. And in this reactivation of archival images, the important stories held within the archives are retold to a cinema-going audience. So rather than the archival footage seeming artificial in its new home, it is reframed within the film's intimate and emotional scenes. 
drawing parallels between the director's voice and the voices in the archival footage. And it's interesting to note that the director was a member of Act of Paris himself. So in my own film, Expulsion, I developed this use of specifically LGBTQ plus archival footage um, by intercutting it into my kind of speculative fiction original footage. Um, and the only links between the So my film, Expulsion, intercuts footage of Joan Jett Black, who was the drag persona of Terrence Smith, who ran for mayor of Chicago in 1991, and for president of, of the US in 1992 on the ticket of the Queer Nation Party. And her slogan was Lick Bush in 1992. Oh, sorry, Lick Bush in 92. It's more catchy than what I was saying. Uh, the Queer Nation Party, by refusing to assimilate, had a very disruptive presence. They were pushing back against the homophobia within mainstream politics, and it seems from some accounts against the assimilationist politics of homonormativity within the LGBTQ uh, rights struggle at the time, although homonormativity was not theorized as such at that point. So in my film, uh, archival footage of Joan Jet Black appears at four separate points throughout. The first clip is a direct-to-camera address, um, and it's very much about her policies, visions for the future with a drag queen president, and her analyzing politics in terms of performance art. The second is a very triumphant um, speech in a nightclub where she says that um, if queer images are merely plugged into the old ways, then they too will function as tools of oppression, which has uh, an overlap with the research questions I was asking in making this film. And the third uh, clip is a rally where she announces running for president and answers voters questions. And finally, there's a clip of Joan Jett Black performing one of her own songs. Um, so in Expulsion, the clips are not introduced. They do not have like information of their origin, um, but the dialogue signifies them as being authentic archival footage, as opposed to stage footage edited to appear like old. Um, for example, in the first clip in which Joan Jett Black appears, she states, I'm Joan Jett Black, Queer Nation's president, candidate for president in 1992. So now I just want to uh, share a short clip of the archival footage. <laughs> someone back there. Usually the, pres the incoming president lays his hand on the Bible to take the oath of office. <laughs> oh, will you lay your hand? I'm going to lay my hand on an In Touch magazine. <laughs> Right open to the middle, right there. I do solemnly swear. You bet. Would you, uh, what do you do about the military's policy on homosexuality? Well, we won't need a military, that's for sure. We're going to be so fucked. It's going to be America the Beautiful again. Who's going to want to fight us? They're going to be so damn beautiful. They're all going to be running around like, God, those Americans are so fabulous. <laughs> Those guns down, honey. <laughs> we won't even, the military will be, the, the, we'll turn the Pentagon into something, you know, a lot more fun than it is now. Nightclub. <laughs> so in the film, uh, the archival footage interrupts the speculative, speculative fiction scenes in the film, and this creates a temporal disturbance in the film's narrative. And Joan Jet Black's ideas and use of camp as a tool for subversion acts as a joyous, hopeful and ar anarchic counterpoint to the um, bureaucratic fictional queer state. So we have like a joyful and I guess, um, yes, anarchic vision from the past, contrasting with a very bureaucratic and um, heavily burdened image of a queer state in the future. And Carl Schoonover in 2020, writing about expulsion writes that, to quote, the documentation of Black's campaign stump speeches comes in glorious imperfection, analog videotape footage showing off an intentionally unpolished aesthetic. In this way, the shrill energy, playful scandal mongering and sloppy fun of queer nation's actual history erupts into the high polish classicism of expulsion's queer state. These two visions of queer disruption are brought side by side. So uh, if chrononormativity, as Freeman states, uh, is the heteronormative passing of time facilitated by institutions that are tailor-made for heterosexual families, and LGBTQ plus people experience time outside of these normative structures, then it follows that queer film would present time differently. 
Expulsion does tr not try to mimic the natural flow of time. Indeed, there is little sense of time within the film. It's also not made clear how long the queer state has existed or even where it exists. So as the film cuts from ambiguous settings to archival footage, there are no attempts made to anchor the viewer in this leap across periods and places. These cuts to archival footage do not function like the familiar flashback or flash forward um, from cinema. Instead, it moves from fiction to document and back again. And Schoonover and Galt, writing in 2016, say that to quote, queer temporality contains the capacity to resist the certainty of a neoliberal globalized future. So the interjection of archival footage in expulsion shifts the film's spatial and temporal space, temporal space, creating an alternative to forward-driven narrative development and allowing for queer history to sit alongside imaginings of queer futures. In doing so, the interruption of archival footage acts as an alternative to the neoliberal impulses of mainstream LGBTQ plus cinema and resists the forward momentum of capitalism's co-opting of queerness. So this queering of cinema creates the potential for an LGBTQ plus audience to encounter queer history unconstrained by a homonormative Hollywood lens, with Joan Jet Black telling her own words, telling her own story in her own words. So expulsion also brings fictional queer politics of the future into contact with queer history by retelling excerpts from Arthur Evans' witchcraft and the gay counterculture, um, subtitled A Radical View of Western Civilization and Some of the People It Has Tried to Destroy. So Evans, after the Stonewall riots in 1969, joined the Gay Liberation Front and later the Gay Activists Alliance in New York and was a founding member of the Fairy Circle in San Francisco, which went on to become the Radical Fairies. And in this uh, book, Witchcrafting the Gay Counterculture, Evans undertakes a radical overhaul of history, explaining our progress from a communal society during the Stone Ages, true to our capitalist present, via war, military empires, bureaucracy, secret police, and psychiatry. He also describes how the Catholic Church divorced um, people from nature in order to exploit nature as a resource and the church's campaign of persecution against women and queers throughout the witchcraft trials and the inquisition. So expulsion retells this research in a very abbreviated summary, aiming to describe how Christianity, industrialization and capitalism have successfully led to nature being viewed as a resource and thus our connection to nature are broken. So I'm just going to play a short clip of this. The Emperor Justinian initiated a massacre against gay men who he had rounded up, tortured and burnt. Accusations of homosexuality became tools for the hunting down of political dissidents as it did again in the Middle Ages when Christian inquisitors, incensed by the sex orgies held for the pagan gods, found queerness and witchcraft to be interchangeable. This oppression of women and queers was no accident. Their freedom and high status in the old nature religions made them a target for the profoundly anti-sexual Christianity. The Christians hunted witches and heretics for 1400 years. Um, and hopefully the sound is okay, and if not, I hope the subtitles give you a sense of kind of what's going on. So uh, this information is presented by the character of uh, the queer states historian, and he's in all these scenes using um, this research as a reason for the queer state founding itself or establishing itself. And he's telling it to applicants in the state. Um, and as it winds up, uh, one of the applicants questions kind of the perceived hypocrisy of the queer state and he asks like how can you criticize bureaucracy and all of this while we go through this opaque application pro process um and i believe that th the technique of integrating a queer historian's radical writings uh, and radical in a political and historical sense 
allows an LGBTQ plus film to act as a counterpoint to the homonorm to homonormativity, which tends towards the ahistorical and apolitical. And while queer history is often contested, um, this scene unapologetically presents it in a didactic manner while rejecting neoliberal politics of consumption. Um, this scene, and it cuts throughout the whole film. So actually, if you look at the scene in a whole, it's quite a large part of the film um, before it was edited. So rather than attempting to show a happy or positive image of queers that is socially acceptable, the historian is angrily criticizing Christianity's persecution of women and LGBTQ people and condemning the violence cried out in the church's name against them or by the church itself. So while mainstream LGBTQ plus cinema has often got neoliberal motiva motivations, focusing on relatable characters, positive representation, and all that's to generate a profit, Expulsion retells this um, research by Arthur Evans in a very angry uh, criticism of Christianity. And Ellie Byrne, writing in the Irish Examiner, notes that, to quote, expulsion connects the patriarchal dominance of the Holy Roman Empire, the oppression of women and queer people, and a capitalist superstructure focused on exploiting the Earth's resources. So expulsion does not create or attempt to create the illusion of a steady flow of time that fil fiction filmmakers are accustomed and indeed trained to craft. Unlike the common temporal, temporal devices of the flash forward and flashback, expulsion moves from fiction to historical document, from slightly sci-fi future to a uh, very politically active past. And the archival footage of Joan Jet Black's campaign for the US presidency in expulsion acts as a hopeful counterpoint to the dystopian bureaucracy in my original footage. The lecture scenes featuring Arthur Evans' research ends with an applicant to the state uh, questioning a blind spot or fallacy in the queer state's logic uh, image of, uh, is that is on the right. In doing so, I wish to draw attention to how histories are constructed and how historical narratives should, be, should not be above interrogation. Similarly, the interjection of archival footage in expulsion draws attention to how time is constructed within the film's diegesis. So the interjection of archival footage and queer history interrupts the forward momentum of the film, aiming to act as a challenge to the forward momentum of capitalism's co-opting of queerness. The inclusion of a queer historian's writing, albeit in a paraphrased and summarized manner, acts as a further critique on the nature of homonormativity, rendering homonormativity as facile in the face of the history of persecution queers have faced. And this queering of history and the queering of time within, a, within expulsion is achieved through the editing and script writing techniques that I've developed and examined here. And these can be used to generate further alternatives to homonormative cinema through artists and ex independent and experimental filmmaking. Thank you. I'll just um, go through the bibliography.